generation BMW X5 is a bit predictable. You guessed it, it's bigger, has more of a focus on tech, and has more safety and luxury items than any X5 that's come before it. And of course, BMW Australia expects it to be a sales success. Since the first generation X5 launched way back in 2001, they've sold more than 55,000 of these things. So, is this new fourth generation version any good? Well, we've got the base model 30D to find out. The base model in the X5 range at launch is the 30D, which has the same price point as the previous generation version, despite adding quite a bit more gear, 11 grand's worth, according to the company. You'd usually be spending 112,900 for a really nicely equipped 30D model, but ours is optioned up to about 125 grand, with additions like 21 inch wheels, the M Sport styling pack, laser headlights, and stunning metallic paint. Some of the standard niceties include roof rails, a panoramic sunroof, front and rear parking sensors, and a surround view camera system. And if all those cameras and sensors aren't enough, there's a park assist system that can remember the last 50 meters you drove and reverse you out if you're tentative about it. That's pretty neat. There's also a whole bunch of other interior tech as standard and the design is edging towards Audi-like in that regard. There's a big 12.3 inch screen up on top of the dashboard which you can operate using touch and pinch or you can use voice control or you can use the rotary dial controller down here or you can use gesture control if you want to try that out. Gestures like that for turning up the volume and that or that for changing track, which is kind of weird and takes a little bit of getting used to. The whole dash design looks great. It's much more modern than we've seen from other BMWs in recent times. And also the stereo is a 10 speaker unit and you can option up to 20 speakers if you want it. You get Apple CarPlay as standard and it's wireless. You've just got to connect to Bluetooth beforehand and it'll work with older phones like my iPhone 6S Plus, which is a big thumbs up. But there is no Android Auto available at all, which is a shame because that rules out about half of the smartphone users on the planet. There's also a big digital instrument cluster for the driver to see everything they need to know about the car. Plus, there's a little camera at the top of that cluster that monitors the driver attention. It doesn't record anything, but it will warn you if it thinks that you're maybe not paying as much attention as you should be. You wouldn't expect BMW to forget anything when it comes to interior practicality, and there are big cup holders, decent storage nooks, and bottle holders in the doors too. And while the leather on the dash is lush, it'll cost you extra. Plus, things like heated seats are on the options list too. Adults will be able to sit behind other adults back here because there is plenty of room. The driver's seat is set in my position and I've got heaps of leg room. There's a decent amount of shoulder room and even plenty of headroom with that glass roof, which is impressive. The new model has a longer wheelbase than the previous generation version and it does feel roomier back here too. And look, you can fit three people across here without too much hassle. Maybe wouldn't want to be the middle seat guy for very long though. BMW's thought of the things you might need as well. There's a flip down armrest with cup holders and there's also a set of map pockets or iPad pockets they might be known as these days. Plus you get fast charging USB-C ports in the top of both back seats, which is nice. And of course there are dual ISOFIX anchors on the outboard seats and three top tethers as well. Now, if five seats isn't enough and you can't stomach the look of the bigger BMW X7, you can get an extra row of seats in the X5. The problem is that you'll need to spend an extra $7,000 to do it because it's bundled with air suspension. You can option air suspension separately, but you can't option the third row seats separately, which is a bit annoying. Boot space is generous at 650 litres, and if you fold those 40, 20, 40 split fold seats down, that almost triples to 1,870 litres. Now, that's enough of the nitty gritty. Let's talk about how it drives.
every version of the X5 at launch is diesel and all-wheel drive. There might be a petrol version coming and there might be a rear-wheel drive version as well. Expect them to maybe be a little bit cheaper than this one. Powering the 30D model is a 3-litre turbo diesel engine. There's plenty of performance here, lots of power, lots of torque, but if you want even more performance, you could choose the M50D. It's gonna cost you about 35 grand more, but you get a quad turbo diesel engine with silly performance. You won't need that. The transmission of the 30D is an eight speed automatic and there are paddle shifters on the steering wheel if you wanna take charge of things yourself. In nearly every situation though, you won't need to take charge because the transmission is smart and offers quick and clever shifts. It wouldn't be a luxury car today without multiple drive modes and there are plenty here to choose from, including an adaptive mode which basically does the thinking for you. It adapts to whatever driving situation you find yourself in and how you're using the car. So that's what I've left it in most of the time I've been in the car because it does such a good job. You can choose comfort mode if you want to be maybe a little bit more cosseted over bumps, but I find that that mode over sharp bumps can be a little bit clumsy in terms of the suspension compliance. There's sports mode as well, but it's too firm for my liking, even though the engine response is better in that mode. The claimed fuel use for this version is 7.2 litres per 100 k's, which is impressive for an SUV of this size. On test, we saw a little higher than that, up towards 10 litres per 100. And prepare yourself for an expensive trip to the servo when you eventually get there, because the fuel tank is 80 litres. Towing capacity for the X5 is 750 kilos for an unbraked trailer, or 2700 for a trailer with brakes. Now, that's pretty good, but there are better luxury SUVs out there. The Audi Q7 and Q8 will both tow up to three and a half tons of a brake trailer. So if you need to tow something really big, you might need to look elsewhere. I'd be looking at the Q8 anyway, if I'm honest, because I think that thing's gorgeous. Now you might be wondering what safety equipment has been added and how many techno tricks this car has up its sleeve. And there's plenty, too many to list here in fact. So you'll need to read the review for all the details. Predictable? More like predictably good. That's the fourth generation BMW X5 in a nutshell. While you may want to option a few extras on the 30D base model, it does embody the idea of a luxury, tech-heavy family SUV beautifully.